G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Hi Christine. Hello Narelle and welcome Hi. to my studio. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm going to get back behind the camera very soon because uh, this is not where I'm most comfortable. But we thought we'd say hi and let you know that it's me behind the camera. Um, today we're going to make a piece for you about landscape painting just to introduce you to it and give you a starting point for landscape paintings. Absolutely. Over to you Chris. Thank you Narelle. So my director is going to take over behind the camera and I'm going to give you a little overview of how to paint a landscape. First of all, I'm going to give you some tips about setting up your composition um, and then we're going to do a little bit of a, a time lapse of that. We're going to show you the materials that I use and later on I'm actually going to take you through painting a landscape. So I hope you enjoy that. Now to start with, I've got some, uh, just a pad of ordinary paper here and I'm going to show you how you can set up a, a landscape just using some simple shapes. I have here, I have some shapes that I've cut out that are going to give you the impression of a landscape or a, a seascape from the air. So here I have a background piece of uh, land as if it's a headland. I'm going to pop in another one here. So this is what we call the middle ground. And then I'm going to pop in the foreground. So the principle of landscape is that you have a background, a middle ground and a foreground. So this is just a great tip and a way to show us how uh, to put your composition together. Exactly. Well, it's just simple if you can think of those three elements. And I'm going to show you in the next little section, which is time lapse, how you can then draw in a horizon. This is going to be some sea coming around here, and we'll pop in a couple of trees. And it just gives you um, the idea that you're going to be looking into a landscape. Great. Thanks, Carrot Chris. We'll cut to the uh, time lapse, show everyone how it's done. Okay. Thank you. This is a quick look at Christine's studio, her setup and the way she works. So it's all her tools, her brushes, everything she needs. That great intro to a really good way of starting a landscape painting. So that just showed us a quick way to start with composition, getting your background, your middle ground and your foreground sorted and using simple shapes really to block out just a really great starting point. So now you're going to go into a demo for us on how you actually go about painting. Yes, so this is the real thing and I thought I would start from the beginning. So I've chosen a canvas. And I've chosen a portrait format. Great. I've painted the uh, canvas with uh, a ground. I've used free flow, Atelier free flow in this case, because it's a nice loose viscosity and it, and it covers well. I've got Payne's Grey and Permanent Alizarin as a mixture. And I've used this fan shaped brush because it's pretty loose and I wanted that loose effect on the ground. So don't take any notice of the chalk at the moment, but you can might be able to see that this is being covered very loosely. 
So you're not worried at this stage about brush stroke showing, a little bit of the canvas showing through, your substrate right. showing through. You're happy just with a very loose coverage, getting some colour yes. on the canvas. And you know what? Sometimes those loose brush strokes actually give me some shapes to work with. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you can work with the texture and shapes that are yeah it's exactly. already starting. Exactly. Something. So, you know, this is all about art and inspiration. It's I'm not trying to create a photograph. No. It's your interpretation of what this you're is. This is my interpretation of yeah. a scene. And I encourage everybody to make it their interpretation of a yeah. scene. Great advice. Okay. So, and you start with uh, what's your starting point, as in your image, your subject? Um, do you take photographs, sketches? Where do you actually start? Yes, I do all of those things. Um, in this particular instance, I've used my own local area. There's a park with a pathway. Um, next to a lake Great. and I like that area and I just decided I keep um, I have a visual diary a little book that I draw things into and I've just drawn that image of the path going into the distance so we've got a background a middle ground and a foreground here and it's just a starting point for me I've done it with a bit of watercolor and pen nothing fancy great what I've then done is interpreted that, and for the purposes of this video, I've drawn it in chalk on the dark ground. So it's just school teacher's chalk. Um, and got just an idea of where the shapes are going to be. Nice, and you use chalk because that rubs off very easily, I imagine. Absolutely. Or, and it also Absolutely. just sort of dissolves into the paint as you it go. It dissolves into the paint, plus if you um, want to get rid of it, just a wet cloth, it's right. gone. Much better than pencil. Ah, you know. I find pencil and charcoal to be too difficult to erase. Yep, much more permanent. So yes. this is a great way to yep, map in your, what you're painting. Yes. Terrific. We've popped in a shot of your starting point, which is from your visual diary. And these were the colours you used to mix for your background on the painting. And these is your full palette that you used for this painting. We might pop a list of these, um, which might be helpful for some of you um, somewhere in the video as well. Two, three. Okay, Gris, so we're going to start painting now. And you've just set up your palette. So could you tell us a little bit about how you go about that? My palette is a plastic box. It's got a lid. It's shallow. Um, and I deliberately got this because I use acrylic paints all the time and they dry quickly, particularly in our climate here. It's quite warm. Um, and so I have, this looks messy, but this is my, me. Um, we have a bit of a cloth on the bottom that I keep damp and a bit of plastic over the top right. on which I put my paints. Um, and I've just got a nice collection of the colours that you have already seen um, that I'm going to be using. And I've got a, a, a size, I think this is a size 12 brush that I'm going to be, it's a flat, I like it flat. Um, and it's quite a stiff brush. So I'm just going to start painting. Can't wait. Oh, and I should say that they, with this um, style of uh, uh, palette, I find that the paint stays damp and usable for quite a few days, actually. That's a great tip. So I've got a, a pretty loose style and I'm just going to chuck paint on here. Basically, this is a bit of cerulean, a bit of titanium white and some um, Prussian blue. And I don't mind if the background shows through because I quite like that idea of um, seeing some of the background. It just gives it a bit more definition, a bit more interest. I don't use a lot of water. I'm using this paint nearly, uh, nearly as it is. So is it just a little bit of water on your brush? Yes, yeah, so I, just, I keep my in. water there right. in an old yogurt container. And I'm just... I just kind of keep it damp. It's not not super wet. And it looks to me like you're you're mixing colour as you go on your brush on the canvas and in your palette. You're not yeah. pre-mixing a colour. I have I have a lot of um, different colours on my brush at once quite often, uh, and I like that 
that random effect. Um, I know and I've been taught to mix my colour on the palette and to then put it on here, but it doesn't work for me. So no, it's one of the things that, that's very interesting about the way you paint, actually. Yeah, I just, I can't help myself. This is, so this is an active palette. It's got a lot of colour on it and sometimes you'll get sort of mistakes. You'll get a colour going in where you didn't mean it to go in. So you've there. accidentally picked something up on your brush you didn't mean to. Yeah. And my uh, approach to that is leave it until the end and see whether it works because often it does. Yeah, great. And if not, you can always paint over it. Exactly. So these are structure acrylics and they're quite thick. They're a bit like painting with um, oils in some ways. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but it does mean that you've got the ability to cover over something. Right, so they're quite opaque. Yeah, they're quite opaque. Well, depending on colours, I depending imagine. on the colour, some colours are transparent and some colours are not. Yeah. Um, and so I. Um, but you tend to use quite a bit of white. In I your use mixing, the white is the which white, helps make things. Titanium white is very opaque. So, yeah. um, if I mix it with titanium white, I'm going to get opaque. Yeah. If I use zinc white, and yeah. I've got a tube of zinc white here, it's a much more transparent white. Yeah, right. So sometimes I will use that. Yep. Um, in this case, I haven't. Now I'm just going to have a chuck in some trees. Uh, you'll get used to my language. I do just paint the way I talk and think, which is just <laughs> to throw things Very together. Yep. Uh, and as it, as I go, if it doesn't look quite right, I'll I'll fix it. You're using your chalk lines as almost like the negative space that you're leaving in around Yeah, this. Yes, I do find that quite useful because I don't necessarily um, want to go perfectly up to the line. Later, when I take the chalk out with a wet rag, it'll leave those lines dark. Nice. Uh, and so that's, that's part of the process. Yep. I, I have to say that I don't always use... Um, chalk I will often just paint um, it's not my style to necessarily use an outline I like to um, just just put paint on but if, for the purposes of this demonstration you need to be able to see what I'm doing and I think when you're starting it really helps to to plan out your composition a little yeah and especially if you're new to having a go at landscapes um, I, I, I do think it's important that you put in some form of a, um, a compositional element so that you've got a feeling that you know where you're going to go. Um, I want to go down this path. I want to go into the landscape. I yeah. want to feel as if I'm there. Right. Um, so I'm going to just, you know, play and play. And I make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a perfect painter. I will get lots of things wrong, but I'll kind of sometimes use them as a way into a painting. Right. And so your subject also is a bit of a memory. So you, you actually do go out into the landscape, you sketch first, you get a feel for the space, the colours, all of that type of thing first. So you're not, it's not like you're using a photograph as your um, guide for your painting. You actually using a lot of you know what you've already seen felt smelt heard especially with the colors i imagine you're absolutely right my aim i don't i don't aim to paint a, a totally realistic picture i aim to interpret something and and i like to spend time in it i'm not a person who really paints from um pictures in magazines or even from my own photographs very much because I find that that's very two-dimensional and it limits my interpretation. I think these are great ideas for people who are starting because I think people often feel they need to um, get something exact or a, a replica of what they're actually seeing, but, but it's great and freeing, I think, to be able to paint um, like a, a feeling almost or, or get a sense of the place without it having to be an exact replica. Yes, I'm glad you said that because when I'm teaching a class, I often do say to people, you know that 
we need to try and find the child we once were uh, in our paintings and actually create rather than rather than copy. Now, there's nothing wrong with copying something. You can learn a hell of a lot from doing it. Yeah. It's just not useful to go on doing that forever. And it's certainly, in my case, I, um, I prefer to paint something from the heart. Does yep. that sound, does it, maybe that sounds a bit cliche, but I really do feel as if I'm trying to paint a memory or an imagination that will speak to somebody else. Yeah, I think it's really great to chat about that and explain that because there are so many different ways you can approach landscapes and uh, your way, yeah, is just one of them, but it's, it's, just yeah, one it's a really it's... fun sort of freeing way to go about it, I think, and helpful for people to not have to feel very constrained. They can actually just have a bit of a play with the paint. Oh, please have a play. Please have a play. Um, it's not about, this isn't about passing an exam. And, and I'm going to chuck some weird colours in here too because they're what speak to my nature. I think that's one of the most fun things about your painting and I think it's the most intriguing thing for a lot of people too that you see all of these colours in the landscape that, uh, you know, you're, you're, painting, you're painting things like trees and grass and trunks and you have things like pink and purple and blue in there. You don't just have green and brown, so... Well, I don't know whether you um, can see that other painting behind this one that I have just recently finished. But it's got every colour under the rainbow in it. It sure does. That's a commission. And um, I'm pleased to say that the person, the man who's commissioned it, likes it. Um, I have to say also that it's not always um, everybody's taste the way I paint. So, you know, I'm not going to have an absolute following of people who love realism. But if you like imagination and colour, you might like what I do. <laughs> that's for sure. And that's the beauty of art, isn't it? Um, yeah, and fortunately, there are lots of artists in the world and we can all paint in our own little way. Now, I'm bringing in a pathway here. I hope you can see that this is starting to develop. Um, I actually usually get back from my paintings quite a lot and sit in a chair over there. That's my director's chair. Um, and today, because I'm painting for you, I'm sort of not doing that quite so much. So I can't see the painting in the same way that I would normally. So I hope it's working um, for you. It's definitely coming together. Um, okay, now I'm going to mix a bit of... Uh, one, one of the colours that I really like to mix is dioxazine violet and alizarin crimson. And you get this wonderful kind of burgundy colour, which is kind of great for the ideas that there might be some shadows. And so that's kind of going in here. And with, uh, with a landscape, if you're trying to get some degree of perspective... Now, I'm not aiming for realism, as I've said already, but if, if you, I still want to get a bit of an idea of perspective. So, generally speaking, if you've got dark at the front and lighter at the back, it'll tend to take your eye into it. That's a great tip. So this is my path and I'm aiming to give you that sort of an idea with it. Now, I think using purples in your shadows is quite a traditional way of creating that too, even though you paint in a very non-traditional way. You use yes. a lot of those techniques and skills that you would. And I do like to kind of put together as a traditional, you know, as you do traditionally, um, often in the shadows, the complementary, so that it kind of gives it life. Because shadows are not black. Yeah, definitely. They, there's a lot of colour in shadows. Now, I'm going to chuck in some wild um, cadmium red medium, which is quite an orangey red. And... I just love, love it in these trunks. Where I've 
taken this scene from. There are a lot of paper barks, which is a kind of an iconic Australian tree. And they've, they've got an amazing amount of colour in their trunks. Um, and so that makes me, just makes me happy because I can put lots of colour into things. So you're picking up a lot of colour on the side of your brush and yeah. adding it in as you go for this. So that is kind of what I do. Um, let me put a bit more of this in here. Now, sometimes when I, I sometimes I get this wrong and I have to go back over it, but I'm kind of happy with that at the moment. There's usually quite a bit of blue, or pale blue and purple in the in the barks of the um, paper barks. And I see you're actually using your brush strokes as well to your advantage. Yes, the way you're using the brush. Yeah, it's a very interesting comment, and I'm glad you said that because you can get the impression that there is something kind of flat by using your brush stroke across or around something and it'll give you a sense of depth or, you know, what's the word, flatness? That's not quite a word. But yeah, shapes. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contours, shapes. Con contour. Yeah. That's yeah. a very good word. That's a very grown-up word. And you also have been using the same brush, so it's a quite amazing what you can, the marks you can make with one brush. Yeah, and I think we all have our favourite brushes. So a brush with a flat end on it, a flat one like this, so that I have them in different sizes, so I'm using my largest one. And most of the time I can get away with my largest um, just using it on the edge or flat. Yeah, right. Um, so I, that, I use these much more than I use round brushes. But, you know, to each his own. Everybody has their own uh, style that suits best for them. So we've got quite a bit on here now. People are getting the idea of how you start your paintings. So yep. maybe you can take your break, sit back, we'll reassess and we'll, we'll come let's, back to some more detail. Let's have a cup of tea. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> And then we'll come back to it. Perfect. Okay, so we've had a cuppa and a bit of a break. You popped a bit more into your painting, Chris, and now you are going to rub off some of your um, initial marks. Yes, I am. Um, so the, the chalk was useful um, in giving me a guidance as to where I wanted to go next, but now it's distracting, I think is the word. So I'm going to take um, some of this chalk off. with. I've just got a wet cloth and see what is left when I do that because sometimes it makes quite a difference to what you're looking at you get rid of those white lines and then you can um, play with them and, and make them less obvious um, so if you want to I mean you might want to keep them yeah they become part of the image I'm just going to take this away so because I'm finding it a little bit distracting. Yeah, right, it's making sense now, and you can sort of see what your pain is actually doing and what where you need to go from here. So when where where you had the chalk marks that was white and you remove it, it's almost like you've got puzzle pieces yeah, that right. you can kind of put together. And sometimes Sort of, it's kind of like a colour block, I guess. Um, so these are quite big blocks now, but I can refine that. Yeah. Um, I can paint into some of these blocks and make them coalesce. Yeah, right. Um, or I can keep them far apart. So I don't really want to get rid of that yet. So oh, I do want to get rid of that bit and that bit. 
So I'm going to work from here now. So I might just stop until I sort out exactly what I'm doing. So now's the time where you'll sit back, you'll contemplate, you'll have That's a good right. look at it, take it in, and then you'll... So you don't just dive in and get a whole painting done in one step, obviously. Rarely. Yeah. Rarely. Unless sometimes, sometimes when I'm painting on plein air, I do. But I want to consider this. I've got a good start. Yep. Made a really excellent start. Now I want to think about what I want. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. So you're going back in over where you took out the chalk. Yes. And so refining want, it. Like I you're want to get about. some idea of the uh, pictorial elements that were there. I don't want to lose, I don't want it to be completely block like. Oh, but I don't want so it not abstracted too much. You're still wanting it to be a yeah. little bit. A little bit, yeah. Not, not completely, but a bit. And I may and, and I may have to paint in some uh, lines anyway, but that's all right. Um, we just and I think I will have to because it's like there's a there's a line in the wrong place here. Right. Yeah. So I need another one, but I will. I can always add okay. it later. Yeah. Right. Although maybe it doesn't look too bad. You know, sometimes when you're close up to everything, you can't really see it properly. Yeah, I think that's one of the, uh, uh, one of the important part of painting is to remember to step back. Yeah. I think when you're beginning and starting, you forget to do that or you don't realise. You're sitting and you're hovering over your painting and you're up close for most of it. Yeah. And you do forget to step back from it often. That's right. Um, and I'm looking here and I'm thinking, okay, what, what was that shape for there? Um, and there is a, so there's a power pole here and there's a power pole here and a power pole here. And I need to just define them a little bit more. Um, so that's sort of what's happening at the moment. Um, so sometimes you use your negative space and your ground to define um, the elements in your painting and other times you go back in or use a bit of both and you will actually use line work to, to define them as well. Yeah, I use a bit of everything to be honest mm, to, just to, to, get, to get the effect that I want. Um, so we've got a, we've actually got a power line here somewhere um, and I'll, I'll just have to kind of play with that until it until it happens but I want a I want a pole here yeah I think that's a really uh, important compositional part of the painting which is why I suppose you need to make sure you're happy with that and that that's working yeah and I'm, and I'm probably going to paint over some of this because it's I'm making a different pattern at the moment so I think often of paintings as you know, being in patterns and where they fit in my in my painting life. Right. Um, and I do a lot of this negative space where I want to leave a space for something uh, and and leave it just defined. So there'll be a a bit of a line here, which will have to join up my power pole. But not perfectly. I think it's a very interesting way to work the way you do that. Makes it sometimes quite complicated. It does but also uh, I think it's a very interesting way to see things because you really are seeing shapes around objects. You're not just seeing objects and painting what you think is there. No. You're really taking note of shapes and um, space I think in, in your pictures. In your I paintings. try to. You know, to me, um, it's the shape and the space that's the most interesting. And the colours, of course. And the colours, and I love the colours. So I just chucked in something pink there where there wasn't anything pink, but <laughs> I just liked it. 
creating more shapes and colours and puzzle pieces. Yes, so puzzle pieces. Now, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to play with this uh, line of the, the power poles, which I've talked about. So we've got a line coming in here, and I'm just doing this with a fine brush. So you're getting towards the end of uh, this painting by the looks of it. Yes, yes, so yes. So you're sort of just thinking now about the last few marks you might be making to resolve it. Yes. And I quite like the having the background as much as there is. And I'm going to leave that here. I'm just going to put a bit more in this section because um, I'm happy with this. Right. Uh, it just needs to be here. So I tend to put in a bit more green there. Um, uh, there is the... Goodness me, I get to the point where I can't always find the colours on my palette, but I think that's what I wanted. <laughs> so, we'll just... I just want to define the tree just a bit more here. Break up that little area there, the space. Yes, that's basically what I'm aiming to do. Um, so, I'll just... Just needs a bit more light, I think. And maybe some more. And here's our finished painting. Um, it's a beautiful scene, a local spot where you often go to play near paint. Um, you've managed to resolve that sky up there and you've got some beautiful colours as usual. And how are you feeling about the finished piece, Christine? I'm pretty happy about it, Narelle. Um, it's been, it's an interesting thing to do to take something and then to turn it into a painting. But I think it does capture my memories of the scene. It's got the shadows and it, it's just telling me that that's where I was. It's gorgeous.